National Policing Review Commission. It's Monday, February 1st. Uh, we are, here's Elizabeth, here we go. Uh, we are, um, uh, uh, this is a Zoom, Zoom meeting. It is being recorded. And uh, uh, let's, uh, let's do, uh, uh, I'm calling it to order and let's do the roll call. Uh, Noah, would you go around? Yeah. Nick? Here. David? Here. Elizabeth? She'll be here in a minute. <laughs> Still connecting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. I, she's, she's I, here, but she's here, not. I see her. <laughs> yep. Give her 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll circle back. Namdi? Here. Cynthia? Here. <clears throat> Oh, she's having trouble. Yeah. Oh, she's here. Uh, hey. Yay. <laughs> Great. Hi, oh. Elizabeth. Are you with us, Elizabeth? Just, just. Hello, can, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good. We can hear you. Okay. So, um, and let's, let's do approval of the minutes. Uh, I, uh, I got to briefly review the minutes, uh, corrected a, uh, uh, a minor, minor uh, word error, but otherwise, any issues with the minutes? Um, um, I just, uh, um, and Noah, thank you for acknowledging. Uh, there wasn't a, um, I think we talked about when the next meeting would be, and that wasn't apparent in the minutes. So. Okay. And how we, we wanted to meet every Monday in time, et cetera. So. Um, does uh, somebody want to call for approval of the minutes? I move to approve the minutes. Okay. And uh, second, somebody? Yeah. Was that, would that be pending the corrections that Cynthia just made? Yeah. Um, pending those corrections. Oh, you then seconded. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Minutes approved. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I want to um, bring to all of our attention that this is um, the week of February, um, of January 31st. Uh, and there are uh, one, two, three more meetings after this one uh, by when we should be putting together final recommendations. So I just want to bring that to your attention and um, kind of keep us on track. So just, just want to bring that up. I also um, want to try to end on time tonight because I have another meeting uh, immediately following. Um, so to start off with the first item on the agenda, uh, and that was to review the complaint procedure. Um, and uh, in, in reviewing the complaint procedure, I wanna be thinking about what we're reviewing it for. Uh, so uh, keeping in mind that we're, I, we're heading, we want to focus on what's going to be relevant to the recommendations of our subcommittee. Um, so if it's okay, I would like to just um, quickly show you, uh, try to do this as quickly as possible, show you the list of, com of complaints for the past three years and just kind of have a brief discussion about what it brings up, what, what it raises for all of us. And if Noah, can you put it in a link in the chat and we can all, uh, hopefully we can 
you, you can all pull it up that way. Okay. Can you share your screen or is that? I, I could share my screen, but you won't be able to see the whole report. If you'd like, I can also share my screen. That would be easy, easy to do. Um, does, does, that, does that work? I can see your screen. Okay, can everybody see either uh, a copy of the report or my shared screen? Getting there, see the copy. Shared screen. Yep. See that, let me get the report. Is it, it's the same thing I'm assuming, right? Uh, no, the, 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 there's, you can bring it up on your own through the, through the chat room. Yep. Or you can just look at it on, on my shared screen, which won't show you the whole, it only shows you like one page at a time. But let okay. me, let me see why I can't pull it up. Let me, ah. Uh, Just one moment. Oh, good, I got it, okay. All right, so um, very briefly, um, there's one complaint in 2019. In 2018, there are eight complaints. And in 2017, there are 10 complaints. I color coded the complaints based on my own evaluation of the complaints. Somebody else might view them a little, little differently, but it's just a rough categorization of the complaints. The yellow complaints um, are the, the, the ones highlighted in yellow. Let's, so let's take 2018, for example. 2019, there's only one complaint. Let's look at 2018. Uh, there were three complaints that seemed to me to be incidents that police conduct was in question. And they were the kinds of incidents that we've been saying um, could be um, managed uh, by non-police um, uh, workers of, of some sort or another, depending on what, what alternative we come up with. But the three, the, one was dragging an intoxicated person down the sidewalk to get the intoxicated person, a large, a large man into the police car. And the complaint was submitted by a, an observer on the sidewalk. And the observer said, they understood that something needed to be done, but it didn't look like it, it there must be a better way to do it. That's what the, the complaint was. And, and if there were um, uh, other kinds of people to interact with a person who's intoxicated, they might not have had to do something like that. Another was a traffic stop that, uh, uh, the officer and the person being stopped uh, got kind of got into an argument over how long it was taking. Uh, and the, uh, there was another one, number seven, was uh, somebody felt they were treated rudely at a traffic stop. The ones in blue, we'll stick with 2018. The ones in blue are all um, what I called ethical or legal violations of police conduct that did not necessarily involve a resident or a citizen, uh, but had to do with the police uh, being concerned about um, uh, the professional conduct and the rules and protocols the police are supposed to follow. Uh, an allegation of I'll go down them. An allegation of illegal Super Bowl betting. Uh, a, 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 a police officer who um, had a, an operator operating under the influence charge against him. Uh, and another police officer 
who was arresting a person on a warrant and was accused of striking the person with a closed fist. He was accused by the person uh, he was arresting. Uh, there's a failure to attend arbitration, which was an argument between two unions. And I, I really don't understand it and I'm not gonna spend much time on it. And then, the, and then number eight, the one that's in green was um, a resident at a house fire who complained that the police officer was, um, was rude uh, and an, an unprofessional and the police officer was trying to open the doorway to make sure the fire, um, uh, uh, the, the fire people could get inside to take care of the situation. Um, and it, um, it, it, by all observers, the, pol the police officer was doing her job in a professional manner. Um, it's a similar list if we go down to 2017, um, except that there are, what, what's noteworthy is that there are clearly very, very some very unprofessional behaviors that were raised that um, uh, the, um, the police administration could not enforce uh, disciplinary action um, after um, repeated uh, appeals and um, union uh, negotiations and, and uh, lawsuits. Um, so it's not, it's kind of the kind of stuff you hear and read about uh, that it's very, very hard to uh, hold um, police accountable in some situations. Um, and then the last thing I wanna say, and then I'll open it up to discussion is that it's also striking to me how few complaints there are. It's just, it, it just seems, it, it, it's striking to me how few complaints there are. And, and, and I, I just will say it, even though it may be obvious, but the investigation of complaints is done entirely um, by the police department in most situations. There were two situations where they farmed it out to some state entity. Uh, the number 2017, um, number six, I believe, uh, uh, just wait a second, hold on. Number two, unauthorized disclosure of department information and harassment. Um, this seemed to be a group action by some of several police that appeared to be purposely um, uh, leaking information about the, the Friday high fives uh, event and uh, um, some personal or, or uh, private information was disclosed to the public. And it was given to some kind of state entity to investigate it. And the state entity came up with, well, we just can't come up with any conclusion. Um, so they do sometimes farm out uh, uh, investigations, but not, not to any kind of uh, citizen representation. Um, and then the last thing I wanna say is in the upper right-hand corner is a link uh, to a New York Times article that really talks about how um, uh, there's been very, very little success over the years in changing the complaint processes um, uh, or ha having success, successful um, changes. Although, in my opinion, um, the Northampton police complaint process could, could definitely be improved. 
and I would I would want something in our commission report to um, to say something about that, and it's something I would be asking um, uh, the chief what how she understands it. Let me open it up to discussion at this point. Yeah, I, I, a couple things uh, a bear mentioned. I mean, first of all, I think we should uh, take a look at how much of this would be covered by the new state certification uh, process. Oh, good question. That's excellent. And um, uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is uh, late this afternoon, and I apologize for not getting it to you sooner. I sent you all links to the National Association for civilian oversight of law enforcement. Yes, there actually does exist an entity that collects information on this process. And um, I sent you two links. One is to the organization and the other is to their page that talks about alternative ways of uh, dealing with this. Um, <clears throat> and honestly, I haven't had a chance to study it uh, greatly. Um, and lastly, I mean, the, the, it is, a, I don't know how much time we need to spend on this because I agree with you, Nick, it is a small number, but also it's possible that it's a small number because of the inadequacy of the current uh, system. I mean, the most glaring thing about the current system is if my memory is correct, I think you have to get a complaint from the, from the police department. Um, which is completely inadequate. I think, I think that one thing we definitely would want to recommend is, is that, that uh, complaints about police misconduct be available to be taken at a number of community organizations and that assistance be provided in you know, filling out the complaint um, if uh, requested. And the other reason why it may be um, a, a low number is, you know, word gets around and when the uh, allegations of misconduct are investigated and adjudicated by the chief, well, I think people feel like, what's the point? Um, I can tell you that as a, a, a lawyer dealing with these cases over the years, I, I can't tell you how many times over the years, mostly in context of the city of Springfield, people would come to me and say, should I file uh, a citizen complaint? And I would say, why bother? Uh, because nothing ever happens. Now their system has improved since those days. So it, 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 the fact that there's a small number of complaints, there could be a number of reasons for, for that. In addition to the fact that uh, the, the Northampton police may be more restrained uh, than comparative uh, communities, I don't know. Um, so that, that's, uh, those, are, those are my immediate thoughts on this topic. Thank you, David. That's, that, um, I, I will read that, that, um, that thing that you sent out. It sounds very interesting and it sounds very relevant. And I don't think we should spend too much time on this. I do agree. But let's let's hear. I'd like to hear from anybody else too. Um, Nick, I, I guess I'd like to speak next. Um, thank you for um, this effort to kind of organize this. I appreciate this. I feel like you've um, helped in a sh short and concise way to kind of deliver um, a window into the complaint process. Could you remind me, just for my own kind of uh, orientation, where where this, the actual source complaints can be found? They're in that drive, right? That, 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 is that where we can find the actual documents that give the actual complaints of the summary? Yes, and Noah could could send you specific instructions if needed. Uh, no, it's there. It's it's in it's in the uh, Google Drives. That, yeah, no, I know. I remember looking at it some time ago, and I'm just having a hard time relocating it. No, would you mind resending that to, to me? Just if, if you can find that easily, I would really appreciate just the original source complaints. Um, and so I guess the next thing I, I want to say about this is. When I look at these data, um, I, I know, you know, well, I, I want to say that um, I, I take it um, uh, for, for granted the point you're making that uh, the low number of complaints doesn't mean that there's not a lot to complain about. I mean, so, we, so I, I'm not looking at this data and suggesting that a small number of complaints tells me that, you know, um, the community doesn't have other things that they would complain about 
if they felt safe, if there was a better process or whatever. Um, what I see in these data um, and what I was interested in about and why I do think it's worth focusing on this, you know, as, as I can see, for example, I'm um, looking at the, the large number of findings of things being not sustained. That's uh, you know, and, and I think that's worth, so, so, so even if we take it for granted that, uh, let, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt, these are the accurate uh, number of complaints, they're very few, but when they happen, I'm kind of you know curious about these these results and then and then the outcomes and you know, when things are so especially when there's use of force you know and and and, and as I've brought up many times before, um, a complaint like you know being rude you know uh, feeling feeling uh, someone is rude at a traffic stop you know this was this was number seven which was not sustained you know highly subjective kind of account I, I'm very curious about the process that arrives at you know this person was not not rude. Um, you know, it, it strikes me that rudeness is in the is in the eyes of the person who receives the rudeness. Um, and and to me, the kinds of complaint, I, I think we we need to be able to take more seriously these uh, complaints that happen at the level of people feeling um, emotionally slighted, feeling um, uh, that they're treated with the citizens who feel treated with suspicion, feel like they're like they're that they're put down, denigrated. And so, if a complaint is actually filed that a police officer is rude, is rude. Um, I'm not sure how that could, in a sense, not be sustained. I'm kind of curious how one gets to a place where you decide that, that the officer wasn't. So I mean, I'm, I'm just picking on that one thing. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, this, this other thing about, you know, dragging a person on the sidewalk, you, you described that one in some detail, which the finding was also not sustained, you know, for that. Um, you know, is the, I mean, I, what I'm guessing happens in these processes is that the, the decision is that the officer was within the realm of what an officer, the force an officer is allowed to use, that it wasn't a violation of the law and it wasn't a violation of the officers um, of, of, of procedure and, and thus the finding is not not sustained but if you have any more insight into that Nick I'd be interested in hearing it um, okay. because you can still have a, a person who's, who is violating who, who, who the public perceives as, as using excessive force but the chief decides that that force is within the realm of you know what's permitted um, and, and, and in a sense the, the debate about that is actually not a trivial one to be had. Like, you know, kind of what, what level of dragging somebody down the street is acceptable. So, I mean, if you want to speak more about that or not. I, I, I do. I, I want to I say that the investigations are um, uh, almost excessively detailed in some cases. Um, the, the amount of pages of interviews for the sick time investigation uh, blew me away. It was like, why are you spending that much time on something like this? But it was, it was very, very extensive and well-documented. The issue that you're raising, Nandi, is that the, the bar is whether the law was broken or whether it's a black and white bar. It's not, it, it, it's, it, it, it's not the way um, most people would look at it. It's just, did they comply, as you said, with the requirements of their job description and with uh, 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 department policy? And, um, and it, 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 so that you don't, you don't get to the question of, could there have been some alternative to dragging this person down the sidewalk. It, it, that, that question doesn't even get pursued. And, and let me just say one more thing. I'm accustomed to working in a, in a traditional mental health system. And there are times when complaints about employees would go to a director or a vice president or a, a, a supervisor, um, that could be resolved effectively with good outcomes. But the person filing the complaint always had the option of, of filing a complaint with the Disabled uh, uh, Persons Commission or with the Department of Mental Health. And they could file the complaint uh, at any time or they could appeal it at any time um, to outside entities. Uh, and licensing and, and uh, accrediting agencies. Yeah. And I don't see anything like that with the police. So, so I totally agree with you on that, Nick. But I guess I would also add that even if 
and, and I think we absolutely should propose, you know, that there must that there should be some kind of reform in the complaint process where some outside entity is brought in to uh, maybe should do all of the evaluation, you know, exactly as way you put it. I, I do think that the, the, what I would think of as a, sort of the final common pathway of the adjudication of the complaint has to do with uh, what, you know, what, what qualifies a complaint as valid. So if some outside entity is also using the same playbook that determines a valid complaint is one that, you know, is shown to break the law, to break policy, if, if, even if it's an outside entity doing that, um, that's going to be a problem. So in your example, Nick, with the Department of Mental Health, if a complaint comes through, you know, your office and the Department of Mental Health, Mental Health finds you that your office, you know, the uh, CSO or whatever organization, you know, didn't break the law, but you still have a disgruntled patient who feels like they were mistreated or feels like they were uh, disrespected or rudely treated. You know, I think that I would hope that another element of this would be to in some way try to repair that relationship between the community member and the, the agency or the police department. And that seems to be entirely absent here. So I, I think the reform needs not, not, just who, not just who the judge is, but kind of the, um, the rubric that is used to evaluate what is a valid complaint. And to me, I, I can't imagine a complaint of rudeness um, that could arrive, you know, that, well, I'm kind of exaggerating this, but you know, that routinely is sort of judged as not sustained essentially. Um, I, I think that, that if someone feels they were rudely treated, you know, the appropriate thing to do is, is you know, kind of how can you, you know, kind of repair uh, that perception in a sense. Uh, I think a system that kind of gives you the hand and says, well, you know, and that's what this, that's what, that's what I'm seeing in these complaints. So even, it's, even if these complaints were representative of, uh, what actually is happening out there. I, I have a concern with, with the way they're being adjudicated through this very narrow lens, I guess is my point. And okay, uh, and I, I, I've uh, taken notes on everything you said. I, I, I totally, uh, you're, you're not saying just not only reform, reform who can review the complaints, but, but we need to, to also come up with a, a, a different way of viewing complaints. Exactly, right, deciding what Okay. It really has to do with this this third category of uh, a closer scrutiny of not not sustained essentially, and kind of what to do about people who raise complaints that are, as I've said several times here, that are not a violation of law, not a violation of policy, but nonetheless leave the public feeling mishandled by you know these very powerful people in the community. You know, so that that, there should be some way that people can kind of have that that feeling addressed um, in that. You know, there, there is one major piece missing, Namdi, and, and I just have to point it out. We don't really see, even if the complaint was sustained, we, we, we don't really see what the result is. Yeah, well, that's a good point, too. No, that's, that's yet another good point. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I think it's legal action, um, but sorry, go on. I'm no, sorry. I was just going to say, Namdi, I mean, you, 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 you've made a very good point, and, and to my mind, these complaints like rudeness, the, the problem is, is that we as a society, we are obsessed with blame and sanction, you know? And, and, and I think that, that these are more, should be viewed more as teachable moments. Yes. Um, in, in other words, it, it's, it's a perfect place to use a restorative justice uh, model. You know, yes. officer, you're not gonna be Dr. Day's pay because you got frustrated and raised your voice, but you are required to sit down and listen to why this person was offended at the way you treated them. And similarly, that person is required to sit down and listen to your explanation as to why you were frustrated with the way this was handled. So I, I think it's a very good point, And I think it should be part of what we recommend in this in this uh, 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 citizen oversight process is that not everything has to lead to punishment uh, and a finding of blame. I mean, this is one of my pet peeves is we are obsessed with, with the idea of blame rather than looking at these things holistically. Um, I fully agree. Uh, and, and, and I, 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 yes, I was getting there as well. And I'm, uh, yes, thank you, David, because I think that's, <clears throat> Because I certainly don't think that rudeness should result in people losing their jobs or anything like that or being, you know, fired. You know, that's not the point. But the point is that that's a, it's a concern that that's that festers, you know, this, that, that in the community and it and it leads to this, you know, part of what we're seeing here, this real pushback about that that, that here you have these people, these armed people who answer to nobody and who who routinely feel like they're disrespecting um, the least amongst us. And we and we want to be able to address that feeling in, in a more robust way. 
Totally agree. I, I just need to share one complaint that really hit home can, for me. And, and, and can it, I, can I, oh, can I'm I just sorry, jump in? I'm getting a lot of- uh, I am so sorry, Cynthia. Yeah. I, yeah, Elizabeth, please, and then I'm happy to follow. I'm very sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I'm, I'm going to go do. off of sharing so I can see you. That's the part of the problem. Um, yeah, I think, I think the idea also uh, behind, I mean, well, I think it's interesting that we're focusing in on um, this rudeness aspect because the, some of the complaints were actually very, you know, we're very, um, we're, we're not just about people being rude, right? Being dragged down the street, all of that. I mean, this is, there, there was there was a there was a there was a variety of that. So um, the other piece is that why I think it's also important to think about what these complaints mean, especially that one where uh, uh, it was a bystander who filed the complaint. I think it cannot be lost on the community harm when when this type of violence is witnessed by the you know and what it does to people to witness violence like this, um, even if they're not necessarily involved. Um, what it does to us as a society or as people of color when we see people being handled in this fashion. Um, the complaint came from a bystander because, you know, and again, what's the test? Is it valid? You know, the standing of uh, what standing does, it, uh, does the community as bystanders have to issue complaints about the behavior and the, uh, of, uh, of police officers with other people um, because they witnessed it? Um, I, 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 there is something to the psyche around, you know, all of the things that you've been hearing about in terms of why people of color are so menaced by, uh, by uh, law enforcement. It's not just the menace that happens to you individually or closely. It's every time you watch a video, every time you're in witness of this type of violence, it impacts you and your psyche. So there is something to be said about, uh, you know, what is the what is the process? What's the validity of the community being able to say, you know what, it's not going to go through this like rigorous checks and balances around whether or not it was lawful. The fact is, is do we want this behavior? Do we are we is this acceptable behavior, community behavior, um, uh, for Northampton? Um, because it is, it's not just about that person and and the police officer. It's how we're all witnessing it and experiencing it. Great. Thank you, Elizabeth. Cynthia. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little frustrated with the conversation because I, um, this is so insignificant compared to, the, I mean, the number of complaints compared to what we've heard from the community for months. And so um, I would never make a complaint against a, a cop. It would really take a lot for me to do that. And so I just want to acknowledge that. And I also want to say, this is the perfect situation for restorative justice if there wasn't a power dynamic. There is a power dynamic. And so um, um, I think the best we can do with this is that we've reviewed the complaint process. It you know, stands out that a lot of these were, were not sustained. It is being done by in an internal way um, we don't know what the results. We also know that there are two sides to every story um, and that it's a flawed process. And um, uh, we could you know, do some pie in the sky things to recommend a change in it, but, but we're still working off of the fundamental foundation that we're trying to change, which is the way the, the, the police department is structured. And I think if we keep having a conversation in that direction, we're just propping up the current police department. And so my, my recommendation is, um, okay, this is it. This is what we found out. Boy, doesn't it seem like it's very, very few complaints. Uh, why is that? I mean, we could you know, ponder that for a long time, but I, I just don't know how much more time we can spend on it. And it's an internal process where brothers, are, are brothers and sisters are investigating one another. And, and that's just going to be inherently flawed compared to what we're trying to do in the commission. So I say move on. I, I'm, I just want to ask before, uh, one last question. Do, do 
people feel this should have a place in our final report? Absolutely. I sure, do. sure. Okay, all right. Yeah, and I, I will- um, but, but how we how we characterize that place and what recommendations we make around it is where we may differ or I may differ. But. I'm hearing just in general, and I just wanna make sure I'm hearing correctly, that we're just saying it, we, it, need, it needs to change and it needs to have, it needs to be easier, needs to have alternatives, and it needs to have um, different criteria. And we don't have to define the specifics at, at this time. I don't think we can. Yeah. I guess the devil will be in the details about what specifics. I, I, I guess I will be pushing the, for, for the idea that we do uh, focus on some details and say something specifically. And I guess the, the one concern I have, I, I, I'm happy to move on from complaints for the rest of our meeting today, but I do, I do wanna say that I have not heard any vision for a final report where we can flip a switch and, and, and overnight uh, abolish the police department. So far, the best I've imagined I've heard is that, you know, there would be um, an effort to abolish the police department after some length of time, which means it is incumbent upon us to be thinking very carefully about the days, weeks, months, and years after our commission land, after our report lands um, in city council. And it is worth our while to kind of state with some specificity the things that urgently need to be reformed in the short term before we get to the long-term pie in the sky. So I think it is worth, you know, in other words, recognizing that there will be complaints that'll happen in the week after, you know, our, our report lands and there'll be months or years before we get to the vision everybody else wants. So um, I think just to kind of say, well, it's problematic, it's a mess and, is, is, is dereliction of duty. I think we need to do better than that. So, which it sounds like we're willing to do, but I wanna emphasize that I don't wanna wave off details about reform because we think that the, the current system is so flawed. To me, that's not um, responsible for us. Thank you, I, I appreciate that, Namdi. And maybe David, your article will um, point, point us in some directions. Uh, let's move on. The next item is uh, finalizing questions for the police chief, um, planning a date and, and a format for how we wanna do it. Um, and it might help, um, Cynthia, do you recall what the alternatives subcommittee is planning to do with the police chief? Um, well, I just, I, you know, they're throwing out some dates. Um, I think February 10th was out there, but they're also doing um, the collection of questions. So um, I thought that's what we were doing, what the categories were. But, yeah, um, and I believe most of their questions did not overlap with ours. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't see any overlap uh, when I, when I listened to their discussion, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah, so I think the specifics of how it'll be handled is you know, yet to be determined by them and us. So. so when we last met, we talked about whether each of us would just take a certain amount of time with our own questions. And let me just put that out there, is, is that the model that people are interested in? Did I miss something? Weren't we going to categorize those uh, further? Wasn't David going to do something with that? Or did that happen? Or did I misunderstand that? So Dave, David and I um, had a brief email exchange. I reviewed the questions and Actually, there's extremely little overlap. Um, and uh, there's, there's a couple which will become completely evident in, the, in, 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 in how we talk with the police chief. But um, uh, it seemed that uh, 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 th that chart, that um, the, the list of questions we pretty much um, stayed to our lanes in what we were asking. 
with uh, maybe a, a little variation, uh, one one very uh, uh, one question kind of slightly off topic, but uh, David was uh, very focused on traffic, and uh, um, Cynthia, um, uh, you were very focused on domestic violence. Um, uh, Namdi had the school resource officer and some questions about this the commission mandate. Um, and Cynthia, you had one. The only real overlap was on the commission mandate, asking her uh, questions about the commission mandate. And I, um, I, I don't see a reason to. I, I don't know what we want to do with that. I want to put it out to all of you for discussion. So one thing, I think I may have asked an overlapping question on commission mandate that someone else asked, and I'm more than happy to volunteer to drop my question like that, because I also feel like I have more questions and, and limited time, you know, we'll all have limited time. So if, if somehow that would help to make it non-redundant, I could just strike that question and not ask it and let somebody else ask theirs. Yeah, I, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time worrying about what each other are going to ask. I mean, I think we should ask whatever we want to ask. I mean, we've this was a fruitful exercise in the sense that we now have an idea of what other people want to ask questions about. But I really think that it would be a mistake for us to try to cabin in our questioning or, you know, I mean... I'm, we have an hour or whatever we're going to get with the police chief. And as I said at the last meeting, I mean, to, to a certain extent, you have to be free to follow this work in whatever direction it goes. I mean, I don't know what her response is going to be to some of these questions. And, um, you know, when you examine a witness in a courtroom, you don't write out all your questions. You, you, you write out areas that you want to cover. And at least anybody who knows what they're doing, that's what they do. And, um, uh, and you, you leave yourself free to, to ad lib based on, on the responses. So I'm, I'm totally comfortable with whatever the rest of you want to ask. And I, I I'll ask, you know, the, areas, I didn't put everything I wanted to ask her about. There are some areas that we still haven't talked about in this committee that I would like to get her thoughts on and other people's thoughts on, so. But we wanna give her these areas or these questions ahead of time. That's what I thought the purpose of this was. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a, problem with giving her areas that we want to question her on but the reality is is we want to pretty much question her on everything that the police department does so i, I don't know i wouldn't want to be too specific with her and i don't think she's going to expect us to be that specific but can I just offer a counter thought, David? To you? I may have said this last time, but I was really impressed by I think it was something Elizabeth said about the advantage of having written answers from her, particularly the things that we don't get to. Um, and, and I think it's likely we're not going to get to everything we want to ask. And so, with that in mind, I wonder. I still favor sending her written questions, by, but be clear that we we may we will likely ask more than this in person. But here are the things that we, that we'd like you to prepare ahead of time. Uh, it might be a good idea to write out your answers because we might not get to everything. Um, or you could wait till after the meeting and write out just the ones we didn't talk about. But I, I, I like the idea that somehow uh, we stay open to the idea we could ask whatever we want, but we, the thing we give her is something that she has a chance to think about, write about, and we would get written information we could then draw upon for our report later. Um, and I don't think that violates what you're saying, David, as long as, we, as long as we make it clear to her that there could be other questions and likely will be other questions that are, that are not written here, the follow-up questions. Is that, would, that, would that violate your... your um no, um, I, but but I think you know what I would um, again. I uh, what I'm always come back to is the way that legislative hearings are done. You know, which is you know you ask questions and at the end, you know, please feel free to supplement any of your answers if you leave the room and uh, think, gee, I wish I had said this in response to that question. 
please feel free to, to supplement in writing anything that you want to say that we brought up that caught you by surprise that uh, that you now have second thoughts about or whatever explanation. Um, I mean, that's the way I would do it. I'm not wedded to any particular format, um, but that's how I would handle that. So David, are you saying though, in what you just said, what I'm hearing and what you said is you're okay with giving her some questions ahead of time that she could write answers to. And you're saying that tell her that there'll be follow-ups and if the follow-ups catch her by surprise and she says something that she wants to revise, she would have another opportunity after the meeting to amend her comments, even to the follow-ups. Is that, is that kind of what you're saying that we, there's always this open door for her to give us, you know, kind of her most thoughtful response in writing if she wants to later, but she would still answer our questions. Is that, is that right? Or, yeah, sure, or, sure. Yeah. Cynthia or Elizabeth? I have, I have a response to Namdi. Um, I feel like we can ask her questions any day of the week. I don't, that, uh, and ask for a written response. I don't feel a need, I, I, and uh, my questions after meeting with her may be very different than my questions before meeting with her. So I would just, I would like to leave it that if we have still have questions, which we are likely to, um, after we meet with her, that we submit those questions in writing uh, and we let her know that we, we may have some things we want her, um, since we can only cover so much in person, that we'll be asking her to give us written responses on and not do it beforehand. Well, the, the value of doing something beforehand, that's that last part you said is, I guess I, I sort of disagree with. I, I do think there's value in her having something ahead of time that she can come in with. Um, oh, I, I'm okay with that. Okay, okay. So as long as we can do that, then that's fine. Yeah. So, um, so the process would be that one of us would give her we could do it by by email or phone. I, I I don't think phone would be a bad idea, but I but you you may but email there may be an argument for email. I really don't know. And we give her the list of topics, which we know quite clearly at this point that we plan to be asking her about, and not not even not necessarily the specific questions, um, but the, the, the topical areas um, and, um, and ask her to come uh, to be prepared to talk with us about those areas of the police department. So this is a move from specific questions to topics. Yeah. I just wanna make sure I understand this. That's what I was hearing. Um, because the questions seem, uh, I'm hearing that the questions are a, a moving target at this point, um, that we don't want to even, we don't want to limit ourselves to those questions, but we, if you, Cynthia, if you feel that giving her, I could just give her the list of what everybody put out there, uh, as well, or, or any one of us could, whoever contacts her. I would prefer that my questions go as I wrote them, um, with okay. some specificity. I, that, that would be my preference. And maybe okay. each of us could kind of, if you, if you wanted less specificity, you could make yours less specific. Um, but I, I prefer that because I, I think it gives, given limited time, I expect to get her, her best answer that way. Even if I find myself not agreeing with it, even if I think it's not correct, I, I want to give her the very best chance to, you know, present herself, I, that, that's what, I, in limited time. Fine with that. Cynthia, you, you're nodding, okay. And, yeah, and, and with the, you know, I think we're all gonna have the, um, the ability to pull back or change that question or do a little follow up to it. I, you know, it doesn't have to be that specific in, in my opinion, but this may turn into a conversation as opposed to a Socratic 
kind of way of, of doing this. So. Does anybody feel the way I do that um, five of us, uh, if we have her for an hour, I don't know whether we want to ask her for more than that, but that's about 10 minutes for each of us given some wiggle room. And 10 minutes covers about two questions. It's fine with me. Okay. Yeah, fine with me too. Unless somebody feels like we want to ask her to stay longer, but I'm 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 open to the hour. That's fine. I. I mean, I don't. I, I don't. Uh, I don't see any reason to limit it to an hour, and, and unless she says, "Look, I'm willing to only give you an hour." Um, if she's not putting a time limit on it, I don't know why we should. We're only going to get one chance with her. Okay. Seem to be having a little more time and give, give, give would be if it's not too much to ask. I would favor that, but I'm also understand if an hour seems more reasonable. She might give us more. I th I, I David's point uh, I, I think is is if it's fair for us to ask if she can stay uh, uh, give us a little bit more. Do you think 90 minutes, David, or, or does anyone have a sense? Well, I, of I, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think 90 is better, um, but we could just say, look, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what her attitude is going to be at this point. Um, and I mean, I, I think it would be appropriate to just say to her, look, we would like a, a minimum commitment of an hour. We would like more than that if you're willing to, but we, we would accept a minimum of an hour. I mean, she, she may be more than willing to talk as long as we wanna talk with her. Um, I, I, really, I really don't have a sense at this point. Um, I, I, I don't, my, my, if I had to guess, I would guess that she's not going to want to be perceived as unwilling to be confronted by us. So she may be, she may be willing to stay as long as we want. How should we contact her? Um, email. Yeah, I think email because of the public uh, Forum stuff, and I and, and I would be willing to do it, um, Nick. If you for some reason feel like you're doing too much, but if you want to do it, or anyone else wants to do it, that's fine. But I'm, I'm makes no difference to me. You just have to come up with some dates. Namdi, can I ask you one question? Yeah. I I'm not sure if I have this right or not on SROs. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Um, I read that it's a Massachusetts law now that a school superintendent makes the decision whether or not they want SROs in their district and that Northampton said they do not. The school super, superintendent said he did not. So is that, is there any validity to that? So my understanding is uh, that the, that state law required that the superintendent in conjunction with the chief of police, uh, you know, uh, by default, up until very recently, sort of had to was required to pick an SRO or apply to the state for an exception. And, it's, and the governor just signed legislation that no longer makes that the mandatory expectation. Um, okay. uh, but but my, my, I thought it was a joint process between the chief of police sort of nominates a person, the super, and it's the approval of the superintendent. And you're quite right that Northampton recently, well, the, the first the budget cut led to the led to the removal of the of the um, SRO because there wasn't funding for him. And then the city voted following Amherst, which also voted similarly to get rid of the SRO for the foreseeable, it was like for the foreseeable future. It was like, that was an open-ended, like we don't want this for the foreseeable future. Um, but I don't think they've gone to the trouble of actually applying, but now they don't need to because the governor signed what he signed. That's my understanding. Anyone else who has a different understanding certainly could. 
I, I just didn't know if your question would change on SROs because so I, did, I just don't know if your question would change on SROs. Oh, oh, oh I see. My, because, whether my question would change for, for her. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, I probably would modify it. I mean, I think the, the yeah. key thing I want to hear from her is get, maybe given that the Northampton has you know, made the decision ahead, but I want her to kind of tell me what do we do about school shooting from her point of view? What's the, you know, what would be the, I want to understand how they would respond to an active shooter situ situation. And since you brought this up, by the way, Cynthia, let me throw one more wrench in that just occurred to me today. Well, I can't believe it just occurred to me today, but um, it turns out that yet another policy uh, or service that the Northampton Police provides um, is a relationship with Smith College, my employer. Um, and so not only do we have to think about like, you know, Northampton High School active shooting, you know, on the, you know, we've been focused on SROs, but there, there's a campus police at Smith and they've gone through their own reform, um, but they, they have sort of had a partnership or relationship with the Northampton Police that I think also, and I've just been in touch with, with Smith recently to sort of make sure that they're aware of our work so that there's an understanding of like, you know, if we make major changes in, in you know, the presence of police and Smith is sort of expecting some kind of relationship that is gonna go away. I think it relates to the SRO question, right? Because we, we don't have Northampton police on the Smith campus, but they are backup, you know, for Smith if such a thing would occur. So I think having some sense of what happens if you have active shooter either at the college campus, high school campus, you know, what's, what's the deal if we don't have SROs, I guess is, the, is what I really would want my question to be. Okay, thank you. I just wasn't sure where we were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Nick, I would suggest that you contact the chief and see when she, what days she has available, and we can try to uh, accommodate her schedule rather than try to get her to. Well, I'll do that, but I do know that we are available on the eighth and the fifteenth. If we, if I look at those Mondays. Uh, and I first and see if, see if there's any hardship for her. And if, I'll if start is. off to see if she can meet our schedule and let her know that we'll change sure. it. Good idea. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Yep. Good idea. Anything else on this topic? I, I, there, there must be something we haven't. Yeah, I, I, a couple of things maybe on this topic, just to throw out there to see, see if this, what the temperature is on, on the rest of the subcommittee on this. Um, you know, our subcommittee meetings have routinely, have normally been just us kind of talking. And I think it might be worth just to be clear, you know, that we're not welcoming um, a community commentary when the chief is here. Um, or not, and, and if, if, I assume we wouldn't be, and if we're not, that might be something that'll be good for her to know that kind of who she'll be addressing or who will be commenting during the meeting with her. Oh, yeah. That might just as a thought, and, and then in the larger committee, uh, meet, the commission meeting, there was this statement that was made by somebody about, you know, telling her to come or without her uniform, um, which puzzled me a little bit, but I thought I would at least put it out there. I, I will just sort of say for the record, I, I, it wouldn't occur to me to make such a request of her. Um, for our subcommittee, um, but but others may feel differently, and I and I just thought it'd be worth, I guess, Eric. What, what's our posture in a sense towards her? I guess, and maybe sort of, you know, is it you know show up here without your guns and your uniform? Is it you know, a, and the public might might have some things to say in the middle of our meeting? You know, kind of how is it that we uh, want to position ourselves? Um, you know, are, are we? Is she coming for a confrontation? Um, is she coming to be you know cross examined? You know, I mean, I I, I think having some clarity about what we think. Uh, we're doing uh, would be worth, uh, I guess, passing on to Nick if he's the one who's going to be talking to her in, with the invitation. Like what what the rules are, what the framework is. I think it's information if she wears her uniform and does or doesn't wear it. I, it for, for, as far as the meeting with her, I don't have. It, it, it's not an issue for me, but it but. It's information, uh, you know, about how how she presents herself. Does anybody have a strong feeling one way or the other about about that or about the issue of of, of public? Um, I mean, I think our time is so limited. I can't imagine we would invite anybody else to comment in, in, in our meeting. But I just thought I would check on that to make sure that we. It, and I think it would be good for her to know know that that it would just be talking with us if, if we're not going to be inviting any other you know um, commentary, which I think we wouldn't normally. We haven't done that before, except for rare exceptions. Okay. 
I don't want my comment to make it more difficult for anybody who has a different opinion about that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to tell anybody what to wear, <laughs> you know, first of all. And um, secondly, I mean, I think we do have to come to um, an understanding as a subcommittee that I believe we are the only subcommittee, and I don't remember discussing this, who has no public comment. And so that's, that's a separate issue. We're, we're not doing public comment, never had in this subcommittee. I don't think we ever discussed it. Um, so to, to do it now when the chief is coming, I mean, it, you know, I, I just don't know. I, I, and, um, and it would have to be time limited. You know, I mean, we have a focus of things that we want to ask her certainly. And at the same time, I don't want to restrict public comment. So I'm sort of balancing these two ideas. But I think Nikki will set the stage when you cut or whoever contacts her. This is what to expect. I think that's fair to tell yeah. someone there's five of us. Yeah. There's, you know, these are who we are. This, these are the areas we're looking at. You know, yeah. I think that's fair. And that, that's sort of the tone I would think we would strike with her. That, that's not, Cynthia, you're saying is what I would hope we would, something yeah. along those lines. I mean, it is an information gathering session, and I don't, you know, not going in it with guns loaded or anything. It's just, how, how are you reacting to this particular question? Yeah. And, and you know, it, it shouldn't surprise us if she becomes defensive at certain things. Absolutely. It has to be Absolutely. expected, you know, but, but I don't think that, you know, we need to frame it as adversarial. I think it's inherently going to raise emotions, you know, in yeah. everybody. Let me ask another process question. If somebody's asking, her questions and somebody else has a follow-up question. Is that permissible or do we want to just say we go one at a time and that's the way it goes? You're muted. I think we should go one at a time. And, um, you know, if you're questioning the chief and I think you should follow up, Nick, I can send you a chat, say, why don't you ask her this as a follow up? Agreed. Otherwise it's gonna get clumsy, I think. I agree. And you could choose to follow up in your time frame. Like I might do that if sure. I, that's another way to go, but yep. you can also stay in our lanes and, and I'll, I'll just be honest that um, I feel like, uh, David, you do this as a profession and uh, it doesn't come quite as naturally to me. <laughs> so uh, so I, I'm just saying uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, we'll each do it in our own way. Right. Yeah, and Noah reminded me that it is February 10th that the Alternatives Committee will be. Um, oh, that's good for me to know. Um, apparently, uh, they've solidified that date, Noah. Yeah, I think the chief uh, confirmed. Okay, good. I, I forget, do you know, Noah, are they an hour, two hours, nine hours? Uh, let me look. They, they're, they ask, they're asking, I believe, the chief for an hour. And then they're going to have 15 or 20 minutes afterwards to process it. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Nick. And I remember it, that conversation. Yep. Yeah. So that's a question for us too. Do we want to continue to meet after we're done with her, uh, talking with her? I wouldn't object to that. I, I suspect that there will be reactions. Um, and the question is, do we hold them or send them? Because everything has to happen in public. I, I, I wouldn't object even like, you know, I think to me it would be a good use of time to have an, a, a time right after uh, to discuss it, although it would be also a public discussion, obviously. But that's, everything's public. <laughs> Can I suggest that we just plan to have some time in case, we want to plan some next step. 15 minutes is not gonna 
really be sufficient for discussion, but it would be sufficient to say, geez, uh, I, I'd like to send her some more questions on this, or uh, uh, let's put on the agenda for our next meeting, such and such, and just kind of an or 15 minutes for our own organization. Um, it clearly is not sufficient to uh, discuss the, the entire session. Okay. Uh, starting time, uh, 6.30 is what we've been doing, or what we've, start, we've started to do. Is that, uh, that's what I'll propose. And I'll get, I'll get back to you if we have to shift that one way or another and check in with all of you. Okay, thank you. Moving on, okay. Uh, next steps for the subcommittee with other topics. Uh, and this raises the question of how much we can cover in this committee, but what, what other topics do we want to be uh, focusing on? To, to me, the, the main thing that we haven't touched on at all is uh, major public disturbance. Um, let's say that what happened in Washington happens in Northampton and uh, you know the Oath Keepers and the Three Percenters decide that they're going to go into Northampton City Hall and take prisoners. How do we handle that? How, does, how do we handle that if the reforms that we're talking about are put into place? I don't know the answer to that. And I don't even have a sense of what the abolish people say about that. Um, you know, certainly what we all witnessed in Washington, at least it caused me to think about this. Uh, and um, I was there when the, the Trump supporters, uh, you know, really it came into town for the sole purpose of provocation, um, whenever that was in October or November. Um, and um, I, I mean, I, I don't know what the answer is. I really don't, uh, but I, I was there as an observer. I was in my office actually, and I came down to the street level to, to watch. Um, and, um, you know, um, I observed how the police handled it and frankly, I don't, I, I didn't have any complaints with anything that I saw, but I don't, I don't know, uh, the, the, the answer, uh, uh to this question. And it, it seems to me, it's something that we haven't really, uh, um, talked about. Um, and I'm not even sure where to get um information on, uh, on on this um but in terms of what what's left to cover to me that's the, the biggest thing I'll just also second that, David. I think that that you can put it in with school shootings, and it, it's a you know kind of emergency response to violence in town, and having some kind of ability to respond to such things, knowing that they are you know no one assumes it's going to happen every day, every year, every five years, but we have to take it seriously as something that could happen, and that there should be some kind of response for it. I'm just I'm just curious what. Um, what you think is at risk for any of the things that we've talked about, um, any of the things we've talked about, any of the aspects we've talked about, at no point has anyone talked about just completely, you know, again, no one on this committee, uh, anyone in the larger committee has talked about completely um, taking away the police, the police ability to, you know, have guns or um, even operate or, you know, have some level of presence. Um, so I'm curious as to, what you what is what's kind of eliciting this this kind of question or or that we feel like what is 
so thoroughly covered by the police right now, which is this kind of, you know, really aggressive response to something or the ability to respond aggressively. I mean, no one questions that the current Northampton Police Department has the ability right now to respond to those things. You know, what we've been asked to do as part of a commission is to address the things that they don't do well or things that we feel like they shouldn't have a footprint in. So I'm wondering, you know, is there is there is there something we've discussed that makes it seem that there's a you know possibility that they won't be a bit able to whatever whatever we decide in terms of what's left of the the, the footprint that we're talking about because they won't be able to respond to a school shooting or they won't be able to respond to the rare occasion of, you know, something like a, you know, the, what you were describing around the, um, you know, some other emergency, emergency situation. I'm just, I'm just curious as to why, why we're, why we feel the need to take up time to discuss something that they do. They are really equipped to do and no one's taking about, no one's, we've never haven't talked about proposing taking away any of that ability just, as at the moment. I mean, I have some thoughts about it, but we haven't as a committee or or as a larger committee talked about taking away any of those things. So I'm just wondering where this is coming, why we should spend time. Elizabeth, I, I, I can tell you where it's coming from from me. It's coming from the fact that I keep hearing the term abolish, which to me means completely do away with. So I don't know how other people are using the term abolish what abolish means but when i hear every time i hear the term abolish the northampton police department that to me means make it non-existent so that's where it's coming from for me um i think you're you're uh, uh, maybe you have a better understanding of how that term is being used than i do but um so that, anyway I'm, maybe other people have different reactions but that that's where it's coming from for me basically second that as well and add to it that, um, you know, defunding and reducing the budget, you know, we already have heard that there, you know, that there've been some voluntary resignations and sort of downsizing the police force, which I think probably is, is a goal, would be a goal of reducing the footprint. But I think we should have a sense of how small the footprint should be in a sense, or we, we don't want to um, take, take another, another point of view. So just to give an analogy here, it's, it's, some conservative politicians have had the view that there was government waste, excessive money being given to the poor, through welfare and other kinds of things. And their strategy has been to just basically starve those programs, just kill them. And you know, on the one hand, you might have a reasonable point that there was government waste and there's a need to kind of cut down on the waste. But in the zeal to, to deal with the waste, there've been serious damage done. So now there's not enough to actually feed people and you've actually you know, really hurt you know, uh, essential services. And, and I guess I don't wanna be responsible for any process that does that to the police department. I don't want to starve them to the point where they cannot do uh, the basic uh, things they need to do. I'm not so certain uh, that, that, uh, that the process we've been a part of wouldn't, wouldn't have the unintentional consequences of damaging the department so severely that it could not do its basic, uh, uh, couldn't respond to an emergency like that. I'm, I'm not as confident that, that, uh, that we're not heading in that direction. Um, and I want to want to want to make sure we draw that line, and I want to understand what the line is, which is why, which is, again, our our group it should be is uniquely sort of focused on what is the existing policy, what do they need, what are they currently doing, so that we can kind of understand like what needs to be retained uh, to perform those functions. I guess that's what I would say. I just, I just want to just also just, um, uh, just again, try to try as, because we do have limited time, want to make sure that we are focusing on the proposals that we've actually put together. And even the things that have come in through uh, email and other things, I mean, just today, the most recent one, so very thoroughly researched, well, you know, put together, it didn't talk about just completely, you know, um, abolishing the police. And so, I, I want to make sure that we're responding to what's actually what's actually in front of us versus, um, you know, uh, just I guess something that is you know where that's not in front of us. Um, and I understand the idea of maybe having having a sense of what some of the guidelines are for an effective emergency response. But again, I would just caution, you know, the 
she puts together a police budget based on what she thinks is an adequate police response. So I just don't know, you know, where, how we, if we're going to, we're going to understand a, you know, what is the effective response? You know, we'd say, here's, here's your budget, 50% reduction, you know, um, and in that 50%, we need you to focus on specifically emergency response without this other footprint. Um, so I, I just, um, I just, we, I just think we just got to caution what, what is we're expecting to hear um, and how we're expected to get to that, to that, um, to that uh, discovery that you mentioned. Um, can I weigh in or somebody else have something you want to say? Namdi, you're going to say something. Just, just ask, maybe just ask Elizabeth, uh, making excellent points. So there's some things in front of, uh, bigger question that Nick asked is like, what should we spend our time on now? So I'm, I'm thinking just to look at the other side, um, Elizabeth, other things that, that are in front of us now that you alluded to that you think we should be prioritizing, putting aside now the question of, you know, should we be focused on emergency response, but are there other agenda items you would like to direct our attention to that you feel like we're neglecting with our limited time? Um, well, I well I think that it's one of the things I think was really um, I, I don't think we've put in that we've been having our kind of agenda and we've been talking about the different things. You know, there's been a lot of research done, a lot of work done on this committee. Um, but one of the things I, I I'm wondering, I'm been questioning is, did we get a lot of information, like really really good information that comes in from from citizens um, each week? Uh, and one of them was a again just a, a recommendation, even a real thought out kind of here's 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 the plan, you know, here's some ideas, you know, there we haven't given a space in this policy, and some of quite a few of them are policy and service related. You know, are we giving space in this commission? I mean, in this subcommittee at all for any of those citizen-based like requests and thoughts? Because a lot, of, you know, we should. If we're not giving getting a space for public comment, I think we should have a moment to reflect on some of the things that have been um, that we've received. Um, one of the things that struck me right from the beginning, actually, was uh, you know, th as we're talking about budgets, you know, this what that wasn't our purview, but. Um, it's somewhat related to what you're talking about in terms of how, how far can you cut before you're talking about essential services, is this idea of participatory um, budget um, making. Um, it's, it's, it's New York, if New York City can do it, Northampton can do it. Um, so I, I, I think that there's uh, policies and procedures that we can explore that are they're really just, um, that, we wouldn't be the first to do it. We wouldn't even be the, the largest, the most complicated city that would try it. So um, just an example, I think that there, we, we don't, it's, it feels um, like it shouldn't just be up to us there. We, we've gotten a lot of response uh, in from, uh, from, from uh, the uh, members of this community. And we should, we should take that into consideration as we're building our priorities for other things we're talking about. Um, I don't know if this is taking a position or not, but I don't, I don't, the, the issue of uh, uh, responding to an emergency or mass event uh, is not on the list of things that is, that, that we were requested to look at. And, um, and I believe that whatever we, whatever the commission recommends, it will automatically have to be built in. I know that um, our police department is too small for a very large uh, protest, so they um, they bring in they they bring in the state police, and they have a whole procedure for that. And I don't know what happens when they bring in the state police. They may have very little to say once the state police are involved, but um, but I do know they have a procedure for that. And as far as an active shooter event. Uh, there would have to be a procedure for that. Uh, you know, I don't know what it would be, but it, it would have to be built in. And at this point, um, uh, we don't know that that, whatever the procedure is, is gonna be taken away. So I, I'm kind of saying, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a road we need to go down given how much we have on our plate. You know, that, uh, that satisfies uh, uh, me. I mean, I hadn't been looking at it that way, but I think um, 
I, I mean, I think we could say, look, you know, these are the things we were asked to look at. We are assuming that the police department would continue to investigate serious crime and major public disturbances. Right. I guess, you know, um, I, I disagree a little bit with uh, this. I, I, I want to reaffirm David's original point that it strikes me like this is what's on the plate of this subcommittee is to articulate what is happening in the current, what are the current policies about active shooters, about emergencies. It is our business to know. Nick, you said, you know, we don't know. And, and I think the fact that we don't, that ignorance is, is, is an embarrassment. Our subcommittee should know what the policies and procedures are for emergencies. That if we don't know, who should know? Um, and, and to Elizabeth's point about the hearing from the community, I totally agree with that we've been given a lot of interesting ideas, but as you rightfully said, a lot of them sort of overlap with other subcommittees. Some of them are uh, alter ideas about alternatives. Some of them are ideas about budget. Um, few are ideas about or, or information about the current Northampton Police Department's policies um, and procedures. Some of them are relevant because they point to, they do point, they show us like, so I got a great piece of feedback today about uh, the question I keep asking about how to replace school resource officer. So an examination of the current policies of the Northampton Police Department reveals we no longer have a school resource officer and thus we now have to say something about what to do about that. It's, it's a question Cynthia asked me and the community did provide us with it all. So, so we, we often have find ourselves right at that border of like our investigation of current practices leads us up to having to replace something with an alternative, at least knowing that an alternative exists. Um, but I think first and foremost, we shouldn't pass the buck on being able to articulate what is the current practice, what are the current policies, especially if the topic is, you know, mass emergency. I mean, I think we should know the answer to that question. I, I just, you know, we shouldn't say, oh, well, someone knows the answer to that. Uh, we, we, we should just trust that when this is all said and done, someone's going to cover that. Of course, they're going to cover that. I don't know that that's true. And I think we, would, again, would, would look ridiculous if somebody looked at our work at the end of the day and said the, the policies and practices of the subcommittee decided to, to not not find out what the police department does with emergencies, assume that someone else is taking care of that and it'll just be kind of covered in the next, you know, I don't understand how you agree to overlook the most serious disasters that could happen in the town and make it somebody else's business. I mean, that, that's what I'm hearing. Maybe there's some other way to hear it, but that's the way I've heard. But I, I think we're talking about, um, okay, if the police department were abolished, where would this go yeah. versus what, do, what is the policy right now? as yes. to how these are handled. That is two different conversations, yeah. I think. And I think you're right now, we haven't, I have no idea what the policy is. I'm sure there's a protocol in place. Don't know what it is. Um, oh, no. But um, I'm, I'm wondering if, um, because there is a lot of energy and synergy around this idea of another place, right? Another department, yes. kind of what I sent out. Um, and, um, part of that recommendation is that it's as much as possible not under the executive branch, as much as possible has no connection with the police department, as much as possible is completely distinct. And that's kind of a, um, might be a direction that we can go in, in terms of more things to do in this committee with, with alternatives um, or recommendations. It's not getting at that one issue though that David originally brought up. What do we do if you know there is a, a, an insurrection of some type? Um, um, you know the the topic is what more should we focus on? And I I'd love us to talk about what could be in that department. How do we envision that department as well? And I think you're right. It's not going to be the department that goes to handle the riot on Main Street. But I don't know what the process is for handling the riot on Main Street either. So can I throw out? a couple of ideas, we're, we're getting close to the end of the meeting. Um, for, I, I wanna say that two things I've read that have had a lot of um, important information and I think are really worthwhile. The, um, the NAN, the Northampton Abolition Now has a, um, a, a lot of um, interesting information uh, and it has a particular viewpoint um, uh, uh, as well. Um, the the um, but it it's very I think it's very informative. And the other is what you sent out today, Cynthia. Probably most people have not been able to go over it. I I read it and I found it enormously 
um, a, a full, I thought it was, it was similar information, but, but just framed a little bit differently. And I thought it was also extremely interesting. And I think both of those things for me are gonna be very important in the direction. And we might wanna have in new business, in the category of new business, we might wanna have a chance to talk about alternative models as it applies to poli policies and services in, uh, for our own police department. And, and what, what policies and services we might wanna shift to the alternative model. So I, I'd like to, to put that idea out. And I also am hearing a couple of people say, should we open this up for public comment? Um, and because of the scheduling, it probably would have to be after the, the meeting with the police chief, unless um, she can't meet with us for a while. But um, uh, those are two things I'd like to kind of table for future discussion um, if, uh, uh, if we could uh, under uh, business for the future. Sounds good, seconded. Okay. Um, so I sh we'll, plan, we'll plan to meet next week regardless, should we plan to, to meet next week regardless of whether the police chief can join us? I'm, no, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Namdi. No, I, I, I'm available, that's all. Yeah, I, I, I think we have work to do yet. I think we need to get moving on some type of, a, I won't say resolution, but how, how that final report's going to look from our perspective. Mm -hmm. I also would like to personally explore some of the things that, that you know, we were talking about is, um, because there is a lot of information that we've been given by um, Northampton Evolution about how to handle some of these things that we've been, you know, those, well, how, how do you handle that insurrection? How do you, you know, I'm, I'm just curious as to what some of the other reports, uh, how they're addressing that. So I'm happy to review that. So given that there's such a large amount of information that's been coming our, our way, I, I wonder if, if we could um, agree to a kind of a system where if any one of us runs across something like a paragraph or a page that we kind of would send it to NOAA to sort of send to the group, like just have some way of kind of sifting through the information. So that since each of us is like looking at different parts of the elephant, so to speak, um, I don't know if, if we can, if between now and the next time we meet, if you find yourself reading stuff and you, and you have something you think that everybody else would be paying attention to, like help us to kind of narrow down the, the mountain of stuff we're, we're going through. Um, I don't know if there's something someone to sort of suggest like that, but I, I, I would, I would, I would uh, appreciate benefiting from the lens that all of you are taking to the data um, now. So as I sift through it, I don't know if anyone has a suggestion. I mean, obviously we're getting the documents, but if we can also have some kind of curating of it uh, in some way, that would be lovely. Um, don't know how to do it exactly. But... Sounds good to me. I don't know how to do it, Nam Namdi. I, I, I mean, I took, I took the, the um, article that Cynthia sent today, which was quite lengthy, and I reduced it to, I just cut and pasted it down to seven pages uh, for my own use. Uh, but but I, you're, if I send that to you, that's my own editing. You're not gonna see what- Yeah, what yeah. You're right. I mean, I, I, and if, if it occurs to you that there's a way to do that, like, you know, I, it's not a requirement, but I, I, let, let, maybe so I'm just thinking about running out of time and if there's a way, right. I feel like we, we, it would be great if we can somehow converge upon the same set of facts. Like if we're all kind of looking at the same things and can kind of say, okay, yeah, the, this is, you know, kind of what we're all are agreeing are the key documents. And so to consciously do that. I, next agenda for next meeting, we've got David's traffic report, which was full of useful information. It was, it was very detailed and concrete. We have Cynthia's report. We have the Northampton Abolition Now report. I think we need to kind of like say, what are we going to, and we have the Brattleboro um, yes. uh, outcome. Uh, it's a lot of information to digest. Um, let's put that on the agenda for next week and kind of say, what, what can we do with all this 
this information that's coming in and how can we um, make use of it? Yeah. Okay. I know we're at the end of time. So yeah, let's, let's think about that. Okay. Um, and um, just uh, Noah said, we can also use screenshots um, and, and send it to her. Um, it's in the chat, so. Yeah, so like if there's particular passages that we like, we could sort of send it. Oh, speech. all right. Okay, I, and just share sections that we like. That's what yeah. I think, because it's the yeah. same thing as sending an article. It's just a. Yeah. Like imagine that, imagine like that we have to quote stuff in our final report. Okay. And if you quote or a fact or a detail that you think would be good to kind of make a point, I think it'd be great to kind of let's all share those things. Great. So we're working from the same. Right. My my request is no more than a page, and I can I can I can take it in quickly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody, and um, I for agenda for next time we've got the um, uh, looking at uh, the information that's coming in, looking at alternatives, and also uh, addressing the the question of public comment and the and the police chief. So. Uh -huh. Or can we say we'll have a public comment at the next meeting? 15 minutes. Do you want to just make that decision right now? Just um, quickly, I'm making that in there, but if you want to talk about it. Yeah, not again, it, I, I'm against doing it when the, when the chief is here, but if, but if, if we do it next week, um, I, I'm, and we haven't done it in a while, I'm not opposed to it. If the chief is not coming next week, let's, we can do it, we can do it next week. And if she is coming, then we'll find another time to do it. Yes, that's fine with me. Okay, and do we have to uh, post public comment uh, in, in any way? Is that, or just have it on the agenda, that's sufficient? Correct. Okay, all right. Um, uh, move to, uh, somebody move to uh, end the meeting? Move to. Second. Second David. Okay. Third. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you.